Hello, in this video we look at the inverse gamma distribution which is a part of the exponential family. Now in this video it's really a follow-up video that I did called the exponential family mean and variance and in this video we generically derive the mean and the variance of a general exponential family di distribution and then we're going to use those techniques for this specific case, the inverse gamma. And so first let's show that the inverse gamma is a part of the exponential family. So the density f of x can be written like this. Now one note that some write this beta in the numerator here, but the way I like to express it is it is it in the denominator. So now we take the log and then exponential of this piece and then this is what we get here so here so the log of x but then this piece can be taken out front of the x the log and then um, here we just get you know 1 over x one times 1 over beta and then we get you know if you could think of this as, as take it to the numerator so it's raised to the one minus one power and then that will come out front of the log and we can do the same thing with beta to the alpha. Now these can be written in vector notation so this is here and you know the minus one over beta and we have the log of x and one over x and then this can be written like this. Now this piece here is called the log partition and that plays a very important role when we're calculating the mean and the variance. Now these are sufficient statistics for the inverse gamma distribution and these are you know just parameters. So to put this in canonical form which is what we need when we derive the mean, the variances and the covariance between our sufficient statistics. So this vector we just generically write as uh, eta 1 and eta 2. This stays the same. And then we write this in terms of eta 1 and eta 2. And then we see it here. And then this equals this when eta 1 is, of course, minus alpha minus 1, and eta 2 is minus 1 over beta. So if you plug these in here, then you get this back. But in canonical form is where you know the magic happens as far as finding the means and the variances and etc. So the mean of our first sufficient statistic, which is the log of x, that is the uh, first partial derivative of our log partition with respect to a to one. And so this is our log partition. Now when we take the uh, partial of this with respect to eta 1, we here we get the uh, digamma function and then the chain rule of course makes it become a negative and let me flash what that is. So the where the, the di, uh, psi of x is the digamma function and it's really 1 over gamma and then the derivative of, of gamma. That's what this is. So when you take the partial of this you get that. Now when you multiply this in there next to the eta, you get uh, minus log of 1 over, or minus 1 over eta 2. Now, if we were to substitute in eta 1 and eta 2 in here, we would get, we would get this function, minus digamma of alpha minus log of beta. And this is the mean of log of x. They're, they're the expected value. Now, the expected value of the second sufficient statistic, you know, expected value of 1 over x, is, is the partial of our log partition with respect to a to 2. And then when you take the partial of, with this, you get this equation here. And then which simplifies to this, a to 1 plus 1 over a to 2. And then when we plug in the values for a to 1 and a to 2, we get alpha times beta. And to me, that is so cool. And the reason is the 
in the the reciprocal of a gamma is what an inverse gamma is. So the reciprocal of an inverse gamma is a gamma. So 1 over x is a gamma distribution. And what is the mean of a gamma distribution? Alpha times beta. And at, as it should be. So the variance of our first sufficient statistic, or the variance of the log of x, is the second partial derivative with respect to eta 1. So then we take the derivative of this, you know, where the first derivative we had on the back page, which is here. Notice there's no eta 1 here, only here. So we get the derivative of our digamma function, you know, evaluated at minus eta 1 minus 1 and now the chain rule that we get another minus which canceled with that previous minus and then if we were to substitute in what eta 1 is we just get uh, the derivative of the digamma evaluated at alpha now notice that well not notice but the derivative of a, di of a digamma is actually called a trigamma and if you deal with the R software package it has built-in functions digamma and trigamma and so that's so convenient so the variance of the second sufficient statistic variance of 1 over x is the second partial derivative with respect to a to 2 now here was the first derivative but now we're taking the, the partial of, of a to 2 of this so then we get minus a to 1 plus 1 over a to 2 squared. And if we were to plug in what a to 1 and a to 2 are, we get you know, alpha times beta squared. And again, 1 over x, when x is an inverse gamma, 1 over x is a gamma. And what's the variance of a gamma? Alpha beta squared, as it should be. Now the covariance between our sufficient statistics, or the covariance of the log of x and minus or uh, one over x, is the partial derivative of our log partition with respect to a to one and then a to two. And here, this is with respect to a to two. So the partial of this with respect to a to one is one over a to 2 and if we we're to plug in what this is which is minus 1 over beta then this is simplifies to minus beta and which makes sense to me it's so that means that they're negatively correlated and if we were to plot the 1 over x it looks like this I mean not 1 over x log of x you know looks like this and 1 over x looks like this and so they they're almost mirrors and and I'm gonna probably get dinged for saying that they're not even close to being mirrors but if you squint your eyes and drink a beer then they they sure do look close you know the 1 over X is this and the log of X is this and so they're highly negatively correlated well anyway that's all I have for today hopefully you enjoyed that I sure did uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.